Dale, and this is Alicia Farms. We're farming fresh spirulina here. Dale has a wonderful spirulina micro farm in Southern California. And he's a spirulina entrepreneur, but comes from an engineering background. I was uh, at USC. Someone did a presentation about algae biofuels. I was really drawn into it because of uh, the potential for fighting climate change. The biofuels were a little bit more difficult to, to, to work uh, financially. I still really love this algae stuff. <laughs> and, um, how can I still be involved in this? And when you see those paddle wheels going, when you, see, when you see a farm in action, it just draws you in. So then I learned about spirulina. When did you start your micro farm? So I quit my job in June of 2017. Got my first culture by the, at the end of that year. We actually launched a micro farm that I was able to harvest off of in the middle of 2018. We had a great season, got a good response from customers. 2019, we built a bigger farm and that's where we've been ever since then. How did you do the research to learn about managing an algae culture? The first six to nine months uh, were almost exclusively just research, talking to people, uh, and not just from a technological standpoint, but also learning about the market. I went to a farmer's market where there was a spirulina farmer. Tried to teach myself too and let the spirulina be my teacher. And you do that through instrumentation by having all sorts of different ways to collect data to better understand and start to see patterns of why does the spirulina behave this way when these are the growing conditions? And that's how I've allowed the cultures to be um, the greatest teacher of all, really. Well, we've got this lovely double layer greenhouse. Um, and it's because temperature is one of the most important variables in growing spirulina. If you advise a new person like yourself to get involved in spirulina, how would they get started? If I can uh, copy what everyone else has done, and just add my little bit of inspiration, make it this much better. You know, we really believe in continuous improvement. It's the sensors that we're gonna be putting in the pond to collect data on the cultures. The pH of the ponds, the dissolved oxygen content, the density and nitrate levels, and you can get a tremendous amount of data about your ponds. So instead of unbeknownst to you, the nitrate levels are dropping, 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 or something else is going off, you can catch that problem before it happens. And that's the whole idea of smart micro farm technology. Yeah, and when you're problem solving, you know, one of the biggest headaches is there's 10, 20 different things it can be. If you can narrow it down to just, well, we've eliminated it. It's definitely not the nitrate. It's definitely not this, it's definitely not that. That's gonna make problem solving a lot easier and faster. And I was also excited to see your solar panels to heat water to keep your ponds warm. And the heat is the most important thing when you're growing spirulina. The sun uh, bakes down on these copper pipes that are under here. And we pump it into the greenhouse. The heat radiates out into the pond. So it definitely adds heat when we need it in late fall, early spring, and even through the winter. I think that uh, having a radiant system below the pond would have been more ideal, although this does work. We've got these two massive food grade CO2 tanks. The CO2 is a nutrient just like any other nutrient. Like, so when we want to know when to dose the ponds with CO2, we use a pH meter to measure that. Right around pH of 10. Where do you see your business going, looks like in the next five years? Well, you know, we'd really like to partner up. There's some other companies that have um, algae products that they're selling online, fresh frozen products. And I would like to focus on just being the best spirulina farmer that I can be and growing really high quality, very efficient product at an affordable price. If you want to try spirulina yourself, uh, you can hop on our websites. We sell one pound orders, that's a one month supply. And you really gotta try this to see the difference. It's so much fresher and it's a lot better for you too. Now, we're selling primarily fresh and frozen spirulina. Do you plan to get into drying spirulina? If we get to a point where not many more opportunities for the fresh frozen, my inclination would be to go with the dehydration as opposed to um, any method that, uh, that heats the product. When you look at spirulina, where do you see it in the next five or 10 years? I think that there is going to be a big move towards the fresh product that with supply chains being what they are, I think that we're going to see a bit of a pullback from globalism. We're just uh, selling out like crazy and people are clamoring for more. So we're ready to expand. 
That's great news because Dale, you've been a great supplier. I've been enjoying your fresh spirulina and my customers like it too. We really appreciate you guys tuning in. It's, it's been a pleasure.